قبل مئة عام من ولادة أينشتاين كان الملك لويس الخامس عشر على عرش فرنسا لكن سلطة الملكية المطلقة على الشعب كانت قد بدأت تواجه التحديات الثورة الفرنسية كانت على الأبواب This was the era of enlightenment, when intellectuals believed very firmly that the way forward lay in science. And they felt that one of the first tasks that lay ahead of them was to rationalize and to classify every single kind of matter so they could see how it all interacted together. قرر أنطوان لافوازي الشاب الأرستقراطي الثري أن ينكب على هذه المهمة لمعرفة ما إذا كانت هناك صلة جوهرية بين جميع الأشياء وعناصر الحياة اليومية في العالم لكن ما ساعد لافوازي كعالم هو اهتمامه الدقيق بالتفاصيل وهو أيضا ما أدى إلى سقوطه Monsieur Lavoisier, you are, if my eyes do not deceive me, consuming only milk this evening. First you had a glass of milk, now you are eating a bowl of milk. Will you next move on to a plate of milk? <laughs> Your precise observations commend you as a lady of scientific curiosity, mademoiselle. Most unusual. As you seek knowledge, so I shall dispense it. For the last five weeks, I have taken nothing but milk. <laughs> Good God, man. I would rather die than fast on milk for five weeks. Are you in the grip of some horrendous ailment? On the contrary. I am investigating the effects of diet on health. And monsieur, with the greatest of respect to a member of the Royal Academy of Sciences, your gut must think your throat has been slit. <laughs> Whereas your gut count is no doubt petitioning the Academy for a widening of your throat. Marianne, how dare you insult the Count? <laughs> Don't forget what the Count offers. Not just marriage, but think of how you will be introduced to all the salon. You will be the toast of Paris. Would it not be a shame, madame, to burden you with the duties of matrimony before you have had a chance to experience your curiosity for nature? Shall we all go through? It's getting rather hot in here. Do you really plan to marry the Amava? لم يكن لافوازي عالما بالمعنى المهني كان مدير تنفيذ الضرائب في باريس كانت فكرته الكبيرة هي بناء سور ضخم حول المدينة وفرض الضريبة على كل ما يدخل أو يخرج منها لكن ضرائبه على السلع البسيطة كالخبز والخمر والأجبان لم تجعله محببا لدى مواطني باريس العاديين هذا الشاب المفرط الدقة والحساسية كان مع ذلك لا يحرم نفسه أحيانا من بعض الممارسات العاطفية في عام 1771 تزوج لافوازي من ماري آن بولز ابنة زميله في دائرة الضرائب وبذلك أنقذها كما وعد من زواج معد مسبقا من كونت يكبرها بأربعين سنة Lavoisier, I think, found his job as a tax collector really rather tedious, and the times he looked forward to were the evenings and the weekends when he could indulge his passion for chemical experimentation. And he called those times his jour de bonheur, his days of happiness. Madame. What will happen if I take a bar of copper or iron and leave it outside in the rain for months on end? Madame, 
Lavoisier. Mm. <laughs> Monsieur Lavoisier. The methods. <laughs> what will become of them? Is this a verbal examination? Prior to an examination proper, mm. sir? <laughs> I really seek the truth. Then you join with me, Monsieur, for you know the truth. The copper will become covered in a green verdigris, and the iron will rust. I believe the term is uh, calcined. Most impressive, my charming wife. <laughs> but let me press you further. Mm -hmm. When the metal rusts, does it get heavier or lighter? Why, sir, I think you mean to trap me. Oh. And perhaps this little butterfly should land. And allow me to take a closer look. Every last citizen in France of sensible age knows that when a metal rusts, it wastes away, it gets lighter and eventually disappears. Ah, but... Ah, stop. I have not finished. Contain yourself, sir. There is more. In a recently published pamphlet by a brilliant young chemist, Antoine Lavoisier demonstrates that the iron combines with the air it, in fact, becomes heavier. Most impressive. I intend... Now, whatever you intend, monsieur, I intend to be by your side. I will learn all I can about your science and become your worthy colleague. Then let me show you how the iron combines with the air to form such a delicate union. Tomorrow, monsieur. Tomorrow. تعلمت ماري آن الكيمياء قرب زوجها لكنها بحثت عن وسائل مختلفة لتساعده في عمله تعلمت الإنجليزية لتتمكن من ترجمة الكتب العلمية المعاصرة وتابعت دروس الرسم لكي تسجل بتفصيل كل ما يعملانه معا كانت تدير المختبر وتمثل مؤسسة لافوازيه في المجتمع كانت محور جهود البحث العلمي transformation no amount of matter, no mass, is ever lost, and none is gained. Over here, please. This precise amount of water is heated to steam. This steam is brought into contact with a red-hot iron barrel embedded in the coals. From this end, we cool the steam. But interestingly, we collect less water than we started with. So clearly, we lose a certain amount of water. However, we also collect a gas. And the weight of the iron barrel increases. Now, when we combine these two increases, the new weight of the iron barrel and the gas we have collected, they are exactly equal to the weight of the lost water. Ah, but is it atmospheric air, Monsieur Leboisier? No. No, because I am measuring it to the very last grain, I can see that it is lighter than the air around us. And moreover, it is flammable. Voila. Water is made out of hydrogen and oxygen. So what he had done is get the oxygen to stick to the inside of a red-hot iron rifle barrel. He was basically just making rust, which is oxygen and iron, but he was making the rust really quickly. Now that left the hydrogen, what he called combustible air, and that was just floating around as a gas. No mass had been lost, it had merely been transformed. And now he wanted to transform it all back into water. 